Okay, so welcome back guys. Today we're gonna, well, this video we're gonna learn about the uh, primitive types. Okay, so these are types of, um, rather than saying types, we should say this is type of memory to store some sort of data. Okay, so to do this, we're just gonna remove this, uh, well, we're gonna keep it down there, okay? Um, so this is a kind of like a container or a box. So for us as the programmer, we could save some sort of memory. Just think of yourself. Do you remember that pretty girl or do you remember that pretty guy or whatever? You put that name and that face somewhere in your memory and how do you retrieve and so forth and so on. That's up to your brain. But in our case, we could store these inside these variables where afterwards we could say, hey, what was your value? Hey, what was the stuff inside of you, etc. So we're going to talk about a couple of them and then we're going to move on and eventually as we make more videos, we'll talk about more. So the first one would be, um, let's say, the easiest one. It would say, hey, how do we store numbers? Okay, so I'm going to create a comment right now. You could create a comment with two forward slashes. So types for numbers, okay? The first one, the easiest one, is called the integer or int. Okay. Notice as I'm typing this, I get an Intel sense. This tells me a lot of stuff that's able for me, and it makes my life easier so I don't get any type of syntax errors. Okay. So at first we say what the type is. Secondly, we say, hey, how do you want to name the box? So you remember out of all those boxes, which one's the one containing your material? Right? So what we do is we name it something meaningful. In my case, I'm just giving you guys a number to throw. So we're going to call it um, whole, whole numbers. All right. It could be any name, by the way. It could be also this if that makes your life easier. But actually, that's going to make your life harder because you want to know what the hell's inside that box. Right. If you're moving and you're going somewhere, you need to label those boxes to make your life easier. Now, you could right away close it with a semicolon, which says this is the end of my code or in the end of my statement, that line of code, or actually give it a value. This is a value it starts with. So let's say nine. Notice that my variable name is whole number. This is for a big reason is that this is an integer. Integers could only hold a whole number. It cannot hold 9.8. Okay, that would be a floating number. And if you notice, we get that error again, the red squiggly line. If we put our mouse over it, we would say something that it can convert it from a double to an int. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so we're just going to leave 9. Notice that the default, if you don't put 9, is going to be 0. That's the default number for an integer when it creates a memory. Okay? There is a maximum size, but I don't think you guys need to know it at this point. So we're going to move on. Now, how do we store floating numbers? Well, if we start typing, there is a float. I'm going to call this one small floating number. And here we could say 3.2. Okay. However, it's going to give you another error. It's still going to say, well, this for me is a double byte default right so if you want to make a float out of this you're going to have to put f at the end okay the same way we could have put i at the end of this or not never mind <laughs> i forget a lot of stuff <laughs> so however small floating number why do i say small because it still has this tiny range it could go to x amount of digits before the dot and after the next one is called double so this is double the size of a float and could hold pretty much almost anything it still has a degree of limit limitation but you know we'll get um for numbers this should be enough to start you off you know what actually even better than that is forget about float completely you guys are learning something currently we're just gonna stick to int and double Right? Int is the biggest uh, whole number we could find. Double is the biggest floating number we could find. So this should be enough for that. Notice again, the default value for a double is 0, 0.0. 0. 
Okay, so that gives us room for all our digits or numbers. The next thing we need to store is going to be characters or letters or a string of letters or a sentence and so forth so on. Okay, so characters and strings. Okay, to do that, you use char or car or car, whatever you want to say, char, car. Okay, this character type allows you to save one character at, at a time. So one character, right? You use a one quote thing. I don't know the exact name. It's not a quote, but it's like a one, like rather than this, it's only one. It stores any character you want from the ASCII extended, depending uh, which font. You, well, anyway, let's not go further in there. So it stores anything from a letter to a normal space to a digit. In this case, it's still going to be a letter. It's not a digit. It doesn't have a real value. Um, to um, a character that's special, right? Anything you want, but only one. So if you add two, it's going to get you in there saying this is not right. This doesn't make sense. Okay. There's escape characters, but we'll talk about that another time. If you know them, move on. It's fine. Now, what if I want to store more than one character? This is where string comes in. So as I'm typing it, you'll notice it'll pop up. So string, multiple characters. Okay. And we use the quotes for this one. Now, it could also be empty or it could have a whole sentence in there. Hello, this. Or you know what? We're going to write um, hello world. I'm going to add a few more exclamations so you notice there's a difference. Okay. So that's characters and string. That should give us power enough to write lines, memorize something, and so forth so on. Now, just notice that a string is multiple characters. We'll come back in the next video where we talk about arrays. What else do we need? Well, there's another type that's super interesting. It's called Booleans. What is Booleans? It's basically true or false. Or for all those geeky people, it's the zero or one of computers, right? So bool or Boolean could store one thing, and that's true or false. Is it true? Okay, and we could have what kind of value? Well, true or false. Okay, either or. Uh, by the way, by default, this is space or, or nothing or null, and this is the same thing. By default, the Boolean is, I believe, uh, false. I don't know. Um, I would say to never use the default case like this. Why? Because you don't want to leave unexpected things happening. So what if one day they change that inside the compilation and everything blows up, okay? It's a really good practice to e always give it a value of some sort. Even though you're going to change it in a second or the next line, it doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt you. It hurts when unexpected things happen. So this is good practice. So we're going to put it true this time, whatever is the case. So this is good because it gives us true or false. That's all it's going to give us. You could also say 0 or 1. The value shouldn't matter. Um, so we got our numbers. We got our character string. True or false. Anything else that I want you guys to know before we get to coding of anything important? Hmm. Okay. I think this is enough for types at least to get us started. And if there's anything more, I'll add them for later on. But this is the default stuff. Just know all of this. And we'll go to the next thing. Well, actually, you know what? Before we end this video, we're going to just output all of these variables that we created. Right? So all of these are variables that contain something. Now, to get whatever it contains inside, all we got to do is say, well, console.write line, whole number. What is the value of that? Okay, and then we're going to go to the next variable. The next variable is floating number, right? Notice one thing. Um, as I'm typing, the IntelliSense will show me those characters. One 
character, right? The variable name, whatever the variable name was. Multiple characters. Okay? Here I'll go even slower. Is, oops. Is it true? You see it pops up. I press enter. Used IntelliSense makes your life easy. Let's run it, see how it goes. So if you notice, we'll get the first value, which is whole number nine, then floating number zero zero, then the one character at sign, the multiple characters hello world, and the value of our is it true? It is true thing inside these five right lines. Okay? See you guys in the next video. We'll go more over everything as we go on. Cheers, guys.